Hello everyone, welcome back to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna answer the burning question that I'm sure all of you have had. What is actually inside a module like this that you would put onto a PCB? Now, there are a lot of modules out there on the market. Of course, ESP32 is one of the most popular, but there are a lot of other modules from different manufacturers, such as this CC3235 module from Texas Instruments. In this video, we're gonna pull off this top cover and we're gonna see what's actually inside this microcontroller module. And we'll take a look under the microscope and see what we can learn. So that way, if you want to, you can design your own microcontroller module for use in your designs. Let's go ahead and get started. Now the module that we're going to look at in this video is the CC3235 module from Texas Instruments. This module includes an RF output that you can then route to a antenna on your PCB, or you can route it to a UFL connector for an external antenna. And it includes a microcontroller inside this package. And there's also some memory in this package and some other peripherals. Now this module has a metal cover over the top of it, and that's the same kind of thing that you'll see on like an ESP32 module or one of the microchip modules, which is very similar to ESP32. And that top cover, I think, serves two purposes. One purpose is, of course, to protect all of the components that are inside of this module. I think the other reason for placing this top cover is to provide some EMI shielding. Now that's especially important if your microcontroller module has a built-in antenna or it has an RF output that's nearby some of the sensitive circuits on this module, it then helps to shield against some of that RF signal. Now these modules are also pre-certified for FCC and CE compliance, and so they generally will have the FCC or CE marking on them, and it may be required to have this cover on the top in order for them to pass that pre-certification. Now once we pull off the cover from this module, we can see what's going on inside side of this module. We can see that we have what looks like just a generic microcontroller chip. We have some other chips nearby, and then we see a lot of passive components on this board. Now, of course, not all modules are going to have the pre-packaged components built into the module. Some of these modules might use a bare die bonded onto the board, and then they make the connections to that die with wire bonds. I think that's a little less common than just using the pre-packaged components because, of course, these pre-packaged components are right off the shelf. So what I wanna do now is take a look at the data sheet. We can see what's actually present on on this module in terms of GPIO access and power and ground pins. And then we'll take this and we'll put it on the microscope and we can learn a little bit more about how they actually designed this. Now, if you take a look at this module and you look at the surface of this main chip that's here right in the center of the module, you'll be able to make out that the part number is CC3235SF. So that is one of Texas Instruments Simple Link microcontrollers. And you can see here, I've brought that up on screen here on the computer. Now here I have the data sheet open and if we just scroll down a couple pages, we'll be able to see what this microcontroller is capable of. You can see here that this microcontroller offers Wi-Fi and it offers coexistence with a Bluetooth capable device using some RF components. So there's really a lot you can do just with that microcontroller. So you can see here in this block diagram that we have a dual band antenna connected to our Wi-Fi side. That means this microcontroller is operating with five gigahertz Wi-Fi and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. And then there's also IOs used to control coexistence with Bluetooth. So you could conceivably use just this one microcontroller with a Bluetooth device and some RF components to broadcast and receive in both Wi-Fi ranges as well as Bluetooth. Looking here in the block diagram, we have access to other peripherals. For example, we have access to an SPI peripheral. We have i squared c access. We even have access to audio codecs over i squared s And then we also have a parallel port. And for example, we could connect to a camera sensor. The other thing that we have here is we have SPI access to flash. So with this microcontroller, you would need external flash memory. 
So everything we looked at so far just corresponds to what's going on with this central microcontroller component that's inside the module package. But what about the overall module itself? Well, there is a separate data sheet for the CC3235 module, and I have that pulled up here. Now, if we just scroll down a few pages, we can also see a block diagram, and then we can use that to figure out what's going on inside the module. So here inside this block diagram, we see we have the 3235 microcontroller, and then they break out all of the other interfaces, specifically UART, SPI, your SPI programming interface, and then some GPIOs so that they can be accessed outside the module. The other thing that they do, which is actually quite different from the usage of the CC3235 chip itself, is they just break out an RF line for routing to an external antenna. Now this antenna could be a printed antenna, it could be a ceramic antenna, it could go to a UFL connector, which then connects to an external antenna module. It's really your choice as the user. But that's all they're breaking out is this RF line. And so that gives you your Wi-Fi capability in this module with an external antenna. Now there is a variant of this module where they put the antenna inside the module package, which is essentially what they do on the ESP32 modules that everybody loves to use. If we just scroll down here to the next page in the data sheet, you can see the block diagram for that version of the module. And it's essentially the exact same block diagram. The only difference is that you can see here, the RF line and the antenna are moved inside the module package instead of requiring you to design them externally. So now that we know what's going on inside this module, let's go ahead and put it on the microscope and we can learn a little bit more about how these modules are designed. All right, so I have the module here on the microscope. You can see that we have the 3235 SF part number in view on low magnification. And if we just start to scroll over you can start to see some of the stuff that they put into these modules. And it's pretty straightforward. They're just using regular capacitors and resistors. And if we start to move around the module, we pan around a little bit, we see a lot of passive elements on this design. Now here I'm near the edge and you can actually see here in the corner of the module, we have all of those exposed pads for soldering the shield onto the top of this module. So you can make out all of the extra solder sitting on those exposed pads for mounting that shielding. Now, something you can also see here in the top right corner of this view is you actually have some exposed holes in this pad. So it looks like there were some vias drilled into those pads, most likely to connect those pads to the internal ground plane. Now, if we go down here to the other corner and we start to look around, we can see that we're actually getting some even smaller passives. Now, I don't know the exact case size because I don't really have a measurement scale in this view, but you can see that they're getting smaller and that's exactly what you would expect inside of this type of module. If we then scroll over here to the other corner, we'll then get over to the flash memory that is built into this module. So you can see the flash coming into view right now. And that's our flash memory chip that's built into this module. So this is a 32 megabit flash chip. Now in this view, of course, it's really difficult to make out what the part number is for this part. But as you can see, it is a conventionally packaged flash memory chip. So they're really just using off the shelf components and putting them inside of this module and then putting the shield over it. And that's basically how they build these modules. Also, as I scroll around here inside of this view, you can see that we have a lot of what looks like just standard drilled vias. So as I move this back the other direction, you can see here, that we have vias, we have standard solder mask, and we have all those vias tented. So really, as you start to move through this design, you can really see that this is basically just a little tiny PCB that they've put a shield on top of, and that's how they've designed this module. Now, this is a pretty common way to design these modules. These are essentially just multi-layer PCBs. They do standard trace routing and standard drilling, as you can see in this design. Now, one thing I want to do is just take a look and see if we can figure out what kind of drilling they are using to build this board. Because just from looking from this one surface layer, 
We don't immediately know whether this is conventional through hole drilling or if this is blind and buried vias. Now, initially, just from looking at this view, you can see here that we have a hole that appears to pass through that pad. So it indicates that it might be conventional through hole drilling. But if you see here in the lower right corner, we have an array of vias which are tented over. And if we just take this and flip it over, and look on the bottom side, if this were all conventional through hole drilling, we would basically expect to see the mirror of that array of vias. So here, if I pan over to the other corner of this module, there's that array of vias that we saw on the other side of this module. You can see that exact same array. So that indicates that they're just doing conventional through hole drilling to fabricate this module. Now, as we scroll around the pads, it doesn't look like they're doing any kind of via in pad, which would make sense. They are soldering directly onto these pads, but you can see here some of the trace routing coming into this pad. So this module was most likely designed just by a regular old PCB designer as a land grid array. And that means you could probably design one yourself if you really wanted to. Now, one thing I'd like to do is just take a look at how they get the RF line out of this package. And that's really important because this RF interface is operating at up to five gigahertz or five to six gigahertz for Wi-Fi. And so of course, how they design the breakout from the package is very important. So if you come up here, you can then just scroll down a few pages and you'll see the pad arrangement on the bottom side of the package. Now you can see here that if we are looking at the pin location, that we have the RF ABG line uh, kind of opposite corner from this arrangement of these large pads. Now these pads in the center are thermal pads and you'll get that information just by reading the pad descriptions on the data sheet. And then over here we have the RF line here on pin 31. So let's go ahead and go back over here to the microscope and we can then locate pin 31 and take a look at how exactly they did this. So if we just count up those four pads or the fourth pad from this corner, you can see here that is our RF line. So you can see on the bottom side of this package, this RF line is basically right here. And here we have a cutout in the coplanar ground. And then we have a single via coming down and connecting to that pad on the bottom side of the package. Now in looking at this, I'm a little surprised to not see any stitching vias around this RF line. I would have expected something closer to an, a ring of vias around this line, but I think some of these vias that are located around this coplanar cutout are actually grounded vias. Now it is true that the pads above and below this RF line are ground. So you do have a lot of ground vias surrounding this transition, but I would have expected this to actually have an equally spaced ring of vias or half ring of vias coming down alongside this signal via for this RF line. Now this RF transition has to be precisely designed to ensure that you get input impedance matching from the top of the package to the bottom of the package Package, and that's going to minimize return loss as the signal travels out through this pad into the antenna feed line. Now, the last point that I want to look at in the pad arrangement is these thermal pads. So let's take a look at these thermal pads on the microscope. So these thermal pads are meant to connect directly to a ground plane. They are located uh, in the neighborhood of the bottom side of that CC3235 microcontroller chip on the other side of this module. And then these pads connecting to a ground plane helps to dissipate heat away from this module. So you can see here how they've basically done this design just by looking at all these different layers. They've used coplanar copper pour. They've avoided using via in pad. They've used conventional through hole drilling. And most likely this is a four layer design because you have that RF feed line coming from the top side of the package to the bottom side of the package. You also have SPI interfaces on this module. And so those SPI interfaces are going to have to then route over a ground plane to ensure that they have reasonably low radiated emissions from this package. And then finally, you have the pads that are exposed on the top side for connecting the shielding to the system ground plane. So that connection of that shielding to the system ground plane ensures that you basically create a Faraday cage around all of these components. And that might have been required in order for this module to pass radiated emissions testing. 
So after pulling the top of this module off and then looking at the module under the microscope, it's pretty easy to see that this is just a conventional four layer board that uses through hole drilling. It's also just using regular off the shelf components. So that means if you wanted to design your own module, you actually could do it in regular PCB design software. You really don't need anything special unless you're gonna be doing some wire bonding. So in an upcoming video, we'll do a design project where we design Design our own microcontroller module and we'll make all of those files publicly available. So if you aren't subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button and you'll get the notification when that video comes out. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave your comments and questions in the comment section. And last but not least, don't forget to call your fabricator folks. We'll see you next time.